What's going on everyone, my name's Tenebris Infinite, and today I'm bringing you dudes a video in preparation for the weapon wheel that could be potentially coming to us as soon as the end of February. It's very exciting, but the big thing here that the weapon wheel is going to open up to us is having wider loadouts. So today I'm going to show you dudes how to keep every single gun in the game, technically, in your inventory all at once. Now, this all starts in the plundra here, and this is where you get to make kind of the decisions of what you're going to carry in your loadout. The concept of this is very, very simple. Essentially, all you're doing is grabbing your preferred weapon of a designated ammunition type. Basically, going off of the ammunition type, you can then have one of each weapon and then keep adequate stock of each ammo type alongside that in your inventory and still have room to spare for uh, health kits and, you know, rat kits and all of that jazz. So let me show you what I mean here. We have the option between the experimental 12G pump action or just the typical 5 crown 12G pump action. The difference between the two is the Experimental 12G has the unique effects between Buckshot, Slug, and uh, Birdshot with its explosive flechette rounds, whereas the 12G just does exactly what you expect a shotgun to do, and also technically has far better range capabilities than what the Experimental 12G has, being able to even service you as a long-range sniper with slug rounds. Now, I had a month of playing around with the Experimental 12G, and let me tell you dudes, I had my fill. There were so many explosions. But I think, in general, I would actually go for just the 5 Crown 12G, because it serves far more utility purpose than the Experimental 12G. And really, the 12G is one of the best weapons for destroying vehicles, whether or not it's the Experimental or not. Uh, shotguns, just in general, are pretty dang good for setting off vehicles and stuff. Now, as well, you also have the option of going with the uh, Herkfist, the semi-auto shotgun here in the game, but really, I do kind of prefer the 12G just because you can put scopes on it and stuff if need be, whereas the Herkfist is more of a kind of close-range combat weapon, and we'll be covering that in spades with the rest of our loadout here. Next up is your submachine gun of choice, and before we get into the submachine gun, I'd just like to say that you can do this with any crown level of weapon. You don't have to have, like, the maximum crown level of the weapon. If you have a four crown uh, Mauser or a sniper rifle or PVG that you're using, then definitely pick the weapon that you have as opposed to the weapon that you want to have. Anyway, I'm digressing here. You have three options. You have the K-Pist at uh, either the 5 or the 6 crown variant. You have the uh, HP-5. Uh, and then you have the AT Wide. And the AT Wide in Generation Zero serves more the purpose of an SMG than the purpose of a light assault rifle. For myself, I've been finding I really enjoy the AT Wad lately. It's got a built-in suppressor, and it's got its unique ammunition type and everything like that, so for my loadout, I'm going to pick the AT Wad. But definitely, picking one of the other SMGs has its benefits, because you get 9mm SMG ammo like crazy when you're carrying one on you. Now next up for sniper rifles and hunting rifles, this part is actually pretty easy because you just want to pick up an Augstudser and uh, a uh, Mauser and just pop both of those into your inventory and then you're good to go. Now when it comes to the PVG that's where you have a little bit more kind of options. You could pick the experimental PVG or you could pick the 5 crown PVG or whatever crown variant you have. Uh, I would say go for the experimental PVG because the benefit of having that piercing damage uh, is just, just a benefit. There is no con. So we're going to pick up the experimental PVG and now we're going to talk about ammo. Because I'm sure that's one of the first things that's passing through your dude's heads right now, is, like, you're probably thinking, how many pockets do you have? And, my dudes, we got a lot of pockets here. 
The big problem that a lot of players run into is they over encumber themselves with a specific type of ammunition. And this is something that you actually can really, really easily avoid with just a little bit of inventory man management. Uh, so let me kind of just demonstrate here. So the 50 BMG weighs 0 0.025. Whereas something like an assault rifle round like the 762 weighs 0 .004. So the 50 BMG weighs like a, a two tenths higher than the 762. And that might not sound like a lot, but when you have something like a thousand of something, then the tenths start to really, really matter. And that's how a lot of players wind up over encumbering themselves. It's either they carry an excessive amount of a heavy ammunition type, or they carry an even more excessive amount of a very light ammunition type. Something in comparison and contrast as well that weighs a lot of players down are explosive rounds. They're the heaviest round in the game at 0.2, so like they're like two hundredths heavier than the 762. And equally, if you're curious right now as I'm filming this video, the weight between a 556 and a 762 is the exact same, and that's something that I don't fully agree with, but that's just kind of probably a video gamey type thing. So the idea of balancing your inventory and making sure that you aren't over encumbering yourself with a certain ammo type is actually really, really easy to do. You just go off and drop off the ammo type into your inventory or you break it down into the resources that it's worth and drop the excess afterwards. I actually kind of prefer option two because then you wind up with a really decent stockpile of craftables that you can then put towards experimental ammunition because there's no other method of gaining that in the game other than by crafting. Next up are your assault rifles and between your assault rifles you have a couple options for your 762 as well as 556 and the interesting thing as well you can lump LMGs, light machine guns, into this list. Basically, just, again, comparing between the ammunition types as opposed to considering, like, the entirety of weapons. So, here you have the interesting option between the KVM Experimental or the AG4 Experimental. Do you take the fire or do you take the lightning? And that's kind of up to your own player preference. For me, I like to go to the opposite end of the spectrum and I like to pick the AI-76, wherever the heck it is in here. It's probably right there. And then you have the exact same decision for uh, the 556 round. Do you take the LMG KVM-89? Do you take the AG-5? Or do you take the newly added uh, N16 to the game? For myself, I'm going to take the KVM-89 so that that way I have an LMG for some variety in my loadout here. But, you know, at this point, we are almost there. We almost have every single weapon in the game, technically. Uh, next up, we just have to choose an explosive weapon of choice. Uh, for this, you have the option between the Experimental GRG, the Standard GRG, or the RLG that was added with the Soviet Weapons Pack. For myself, I kind of like the RLG because it's just kind of a damage-dealing, anti-tank-ish type explosive weapon. Because uh, we don't fully have a proper anti-tank explosive weapon in the game currently. Uh, so, I kind of prefer that, but... The GRG does have its benefits with the three different ammunition types, but then you also kind of run the risk of, again, carrying too much of a certain ammunition type and potentially over-encumbering yourself. And that is that! We have all of our primary weapons designated. All of the hunting rifles, the, uh, the 50 cal weapon, our shotgun of choice, our SMG of choice, our 762 weapon of choice, our 556 of choice, and then lastly, our explosive weapon of choice. And then the same decision-making process comes to the sidearms for just one of the guns. So you only have one tough decision to make. Do you pick the N9 with all of its flair and style, or do you pick the experimental Clock 17 because it's a little bit more practical? 
stats wise they're like the exact same gun so uh, the o only difference between the two is with one you get a really awesome weapon swap animation versus the other one where you get the chance to EMP people and so uh, or machines so I'm gonna go with the N9 myself because I really enjoy the weapon swap animation uh, then you just take a Magnus you take the molar PP and then you have again I guess a bit of an option here between the sledgehammer and the experimental sledge uh, really the experimental sledge is a super awesome melee weapon so we're gonna go with that one and then you take the brombo bat and there you go you've got every single weapon in the game with a little bit of an asterisk there now, we've had our heads stuck in this plundra for quite a bit here, but we've got two more things to talk about before we get out in the field, and then I can show you guys, like, kind of the benefit of this, and just kind of talk about the benefits of it. So, first and foremost is ammo delegation. And the thing that you want to decide is what ammo type you're going to carry for each weapon. Once you've decided this, keeping stock of that ammunition type is really straightforward from that point forwards. You can either just collect it off of machines and stuff with a secondary character and store it in your plundra to then transfer to this character, or you can store crafting materials and then craft those ammo amounts with this character, or you could just have a good scavenging character and just try to really keep stock of your inventory, but I don't advise that third option. There's a lot of thinking that goes into that, and then like if your inventory falls out of whack, everything goes into chaos, and you know, it's nicer to just have the room to play with here. For your equipment, again, you have a similar leeway where you are going to decide one med kit of choice and then two tertiary weapons or, or items that you carry along with you. Whether or not it's rad kits or flares or, you know, grenades and landmines or something like that, uh, you're going to only keep just two of those, though, just to keep your inventory nice and organized. And then alongside that, adrenaline uh, for your character. Lastly, here comes the attachments, and this is where you have, again, a couple options. You can either try to keep attachments on all of your weapons all at once, uh, keeping them all just fully stocked with whatever attachments you like. It won't weigh you down too much, but it will eat a little bit into the supply of utility items that you can bring along with you. Or you can do what I do, where I actually kind of just carry one of each type of thing again similar to the ammo mentality here where i carry one assault silencer and one assault extension and uh swap between the two on whatever weapon i so choose kind of keeping both of the weapons with at least a silencer or an extension on either one uh, and then going forwards with uh, hunting rifles, I carry one hunting rifle silencer because generally you aren't going to be using both hunting rifles at the same time. Then from there I carry one of each scope type uh, so that that way then I can swap between whatever scopes will function better for the purpose that I'm kind of aiming to seek. Uh, and then from that point on, you kind of want to have an extended magazine in all of your weapons uh, just to get the maximum amount of ammunition that you can carry in the weapon at a time without having to reload like crazy all the time. Deciding all of your attachments can be a little bit of a lengthy process, but once you've done it once for your desired weapon loadout on that character, then you don't need to ever do it again unless if you're upgrading crown levels. So I'm just going to kind of commentate over this uh, little bit of combat montage going on in the background here. But the main thing that I'm trying to show off here is just how fluid it actually is to do this kind of like one ammunition type, one gun, uh, having a huge loadout kind of thing here in Generation Zero. So you can see that all I gotta do is pop into a little bit of cover here, and as long as I'm safe for like longer than five seconds, I'm good to go for swapping around my inventory and uh, pulling out the weapons that I need to, allowing me to make use of more unique weapons on the fly, like the Mauser with the explosive ammo.
In doing this, you really get the opportunity to see all of the guns in Generation Zero shine for their specific uses. Like, the Mauser is actually a very deadly close-range sniper, and uh, you really get to see that with the explosive ammo in combination, too, with the 1x4 scope. But then you could do very unique things like going off and using the AT wad to rip through armor, or having your 556 uh, light machine gun for mowing down a large group of enemies without having to reload in the process. You can even do some cursed things like putting a scope on the magnum so that you can snipe with it so that you can say that you did that at least once in Generation Zero and then never do it again because scopes on handguns is wrong. But yeah, or you could use armor-piercing rounds in the PVG to kind of take off armor at an extreme distance, then swap to something like the RLG to really hammer home with some explosive damage on those exposed components. And with the approach of carrying, like, one attachment per weapon, it gives you the opportunity to use the silencer on, uh, say, your assault rifle of choice so that that way you aren't drawing in too many machines while you're taking down one, and then swapping to the uh, barrel extension to get that extended velocity so that that way you can get the kill on the machine as it's about to die and you're going to move on to the next ones anyway. Also, the RLG is a pure stealth weapon. If, if you don't agree with me, well, you're wrong. But, <laughs> jokes aside, uh, it really opens up this game in a huge way, having such a massive loadout on you at all times. And the other thing too, it's really not that hard to manage as you might think. As long as you pay no attention to like, you know, how your weapons are organized or anything, but you just remember what your weapons are by name and stuff, it's actually incredibly easy to organize, and keeping your ammo counts low is not as hard as you would think when you have a whole bunch of weapons to work with. You just have to kind of know the amounts to carry. I find that like 100 BMG is usually pretty good for a couple fights, maybe one or two. Uh, and then for the 762, the 556, or something for the SMG, I generally want to carry like, you know, two to three thousand of that. Uh, but not somewhere obscene like the 10 to 15 thousand like what you can carry normally. And then from there, my dudes, you're pretty much set. So uh, there you go, a video on how to carry all of the weapons here in Generation Zero, with a little bit of an asterisk beside it. Uh, this is going to be hugely beneficial when the weapon wheel comes around, my dudes, because then we'll be able to designate eight weapons in total to use at a time. Of course, we'll wanna have like one slot for med kits or something like that, but still, we'll be able to use so many more weapons at once, which is gonna be crazy for combat. Uh, I'm sure you could tell even just from that little clip there that like combat is going to expand massively with that weapon wheel. Uh, so hopefully you're excited for that weapon wheel. Uh, hopefully you can get some better use out of maybe some guns that you haven't used in a while. But for now, stay awesome everyone. Uh, maybe subscribe to stick around for more, but I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace out my dudes.